Okay, the next aloof and apart deck that I made is for House Lannister. Um, I should say I do think that you can make a... There's, I'm sure you can make a, a deck with this agenda, probably multiple for every faction. And it'll be fine and playable and at least not bad. But for... So the other obvious choice is Tyrell. That's going to be the last one. But after Greyjoy and Tyrell, I had to think about what's the third one going to be that I do. Like, what's the third best faction for the agenda? And I thought I tried to to look at Stark and maybe try Stark. And I again, I I, I looked at Martell and I was like, eh. What I've seen some people do is try to pick Targaryen and then play the big dragons, like the six and seven cost versions of the dragons. That's not that good because it's. I don't know, it's just not good, in my opinion. It's fun, probably, but it's not very good. Maybe I'll do that if I ever come back to this agenda, even though it's not good, just because that's more fun than playing, you know, a total cookie-cutter deck. It was between Lannister and Baratheon. I made a Baratheon version and played it for a while. It was fine, it won plenty of games, but what I realized is I was putting Valyrian's crew in the deck just to have enough big characters to justify the agenda. After Robert Baratheon and Stannis, it's really barren in terms of characters that you want to play that actually justify this. Uh, and even Stannis is like kind of questionable because he doesn't have renown. You have to give, you have to draw Lightbringer to give him renown. So it's like, uh, he's just a really big body. Like, okay. Um, I, and it is nice that the agenda works with non-uniques. I do think it's cool to see this used to play cards like Valyrian's crew but at the end of the day I think using it to play the the bigger unique characters is probably you know where more of a normal type of use of the agenda and if I'm playing the big non-unique characters I really want to meme with manning the city walls so I'm going to try and save that for other decks the Lannister and the Lannister version so I try to have 12 characters that cost seven or more in these decks well, six or more, actually, although a lot of them do cost seven. And even in Lannister, it's a little bit tough. Uh, so I've got, like, three Jamies. This, I mean, he's still pretty good, I guess. I guess he's probably fine now, especially since general card power level, theoretically, has been lowered. But I'm not super excited to have three of him, but I was like, okay, fine. He has the Renown. I'll put him in. Three Cersei's and three Tywins are the easy ones. And then some one ofs like Sir Gregor. Um, where is jo Joffrey? Because he's just a good one shot effect. You could put one Illin Payne, one Kevin Lannister. Those are probably fine. And you have. I chose Jack and Hagar though, because he's funny. I was like, out of all the options, this is a, the, the funniest one that I can pick. Beric would probably be fine if you really want to do that. You could even put Bronze Jan Royce, probably be okay. I mean, he has renown, right? But Jacken is hilarious. Uh, even if his ability doesn't do anything, just five strength, three icons is pretty good. And his ability really can mess with people. Especially when you combine it with Pinch of Powder, which I had in the Baratheon deck as well. It did a lot of work in the Baratheon deck. This is a really good card for if you run into a board stalemate situation, where kind of both players make a big board, neither player really wants to do a reset, and it's awkward, like, no one really, it gets really hard to declare any challenges because there's too many characters and the challenge math is too much and no one really wants to do anything. Pinch of Powder can mess that up. First of all, a lot of people will, especially in this deck because it's Lannister, they will not realize what this is. You put it in a card in Shadows and they're just like, oh, whatever. You know, there's a bunch of things it could be. So they, you know, when Pinch of Powder com actually comes out, they're not ready for it. If you declare a seven strength power challenge, they don't think, oh crap, I have to, to block because of Pinch of Powder. They'll just toss away like a one strength chump block and then this comes out and screws them. Uh, that's, you know, that's something that you can do. And it is, it's Shadow 1, so it goes with the Lannister Challenge Phase Gold a little bit. I think that's good to have in there. And then the rest of the deck is just like play all the good cards, basically. And there's a lot of flexibility at this point for what you consider the good cards or, you know, which cards you prefer. There's not enough room to put all of the cards that are decent and, you know, that you can justify playing in this deck. Like, even just in terms of events, Hands Judgment, Nightmares, those are fine. Obviously, there's not room to put those in. Then in terms of, like, Lannister-specific locations and attachments and such, uh, you could put in Lion Star. I do have three Hounds. If you do, like, Lion Star and then three Painted Dogs, 
that's something you can do for fun. You can probably put flea bottom in with the gold mines and the hounds and still get away with it, even though flea bottom is not as good as before. Uh, you could probably toss a couple of them in there and they could do some work. I've gone with the Alchemist Guild Hall uh, and the four cost red keep. But again, there's a lot of flexibility. Like you could put Tower of the, not Tower of the, Tower of the Hand. You probably wouldn't want to do Tower of the Hand because of the agenda here with the prized one. But if I open up the card pool, there's a lot of like reasonable options. I uh, don't know if Sir Pounce is actually worth it. Again, it's just something I sort of settled on. Like, all right, I guess one of these is fine. Uh, the milks, the bodyguards, it's all self-explanatory. The characters are nothing special. I just threw in like what I think the best characters are, pretty much, that aren't super expensive. You know, other than my big characters, I'm trying to tend towards characters that cost less. Looks like the only other one that costs more than three is Tyrion. I do have three of them because he's still pretty outstanding. And, you know, Lannister just doesn't really have that many great, amazing characters to where I, I feel the need to spice it up and, and only have one of these so I can have more one-ofs of characters that probably aren't going to be as good as him. And we do have bodyguards and like Valor Magulus and stuff, so he should probably be in there. And First Snow. So we have the Valar, the First Snow, pretty self-explanatory. Close Call, uh, you, you don't have to run Close Call. That's Again, that's because I looked through the list of plots and it was hard for me to find any plots that I, you know, wanted to play that, that I really felt like would do much of anything. There's a bunch of cheeky plots that you could try that are probably bad. Uh, I picked Close Call because I'm playing multiples of, like, four characters, and they're all really important characters. Like, if Tywin dies and I draw another Tywin, I really need to be able to play Tywin. And even if you don't, you know, it's five gold and it draws a card, so even if you don't use it to revive somebody, it still is pretty good, which you often can't say for meme, uh, meme plots. Like, a meme plot that I looked at was the Spider's Web, which, like, lets you do an extra intrigue after you win the first one with raised claim and, and something like that. But the stats are terrible. It's, like, three gold, four reserve. So if the effect doesn't go off or if the effect isn't very strong, then it's, it's like, oh, you don't, you don't like having that in your deck. Uh, exchange also goes with Close Call because a problem with Exchange is they'll give you dead characters if you have dupes of your characters in your deck. But with Close Call, if they give you like a dupe of a dead Tywin and they think that was smart, and then next turn you Close Call, maybe it wasn't so smart after all. A confiscation, same reasoning as Close Call. It's This is boring, like I kind of want something more exciting than this, but just going down the list of like plots, and it's like, well, I guess it's confiscation, because there's no an other answer to Milk of the Poppy anywhere in here. There's like literally nothing you can do about it. And Milk of the Poppy on Tywin or Cersei can lose you the game. Normally, I would have, like, the Regent's Guard or Iron Bank or something. But again, I don't want to bounce my big characters because of the agenda. So I guess it's Confiscation. Then At the Gates and Noble Cause, why not? So let's see what happens with this deck. Like I said, this, this deck's pretty boring. It's fine to just drive it around and it'll win some games probably. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Oh no, it's Greyjoy. Not the Greyjoy aloof. Have a super strong setup though. This is like top tier setup. The only way, the only be better setup than this is when you get uh, Tywin. Stop disconnecting. Come on, man. No, not Dagmer. So luckily, Dagmer does. Absolutely nothing with the way that the board is here. I guess he's Greyjoy, so... Oh, yeah, I have Jamie. I should definitely go first. So, again, I drew the Great Hall on setup, but I'm just going to get Gates of the Moon. Got the Milk. Got the Tywin. Don't have a bodyguard for Tywin, which is a little spooky. All right, let's, let's play Try Hard and do math. So, six gold... Minus two from the agenda, minus two from Great Hall, minus one here, minus one here. So like 12 gold. 12 is seven for Tywin. Then one, two, one. So we can play a Rose Road, I think, and exactly have a good amount.
Yep, that was perfect. See? I did the math to figure out if Rose Road or Western Fiefdom was more optimal. There's no cards in hand where having the five gold instead of the four, I should treachery that. That's mean, but the sad reality is that's the efficient use of treachery because it blocks a seven cost character. Oh no, because of this. Still, zero gold, that's the difference between, you know, we do not sow or not, we do not sow. I held the milk. Milking Asha is obviously better than milking a Dagmar with no targets. Stupid Asha. Yeah, the, the Great Hall was two gold, so two gold could have been another character there. Oh, this is a bit laggy. Maybe this guy lives in Asia or something. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He's not going to get his Asha trigger. Because I have Widow's Will. We use Tywin to block Dagmar. And he might pass challenges because of that. I mean, that would be like the smart thing to do. Don't give Tywin Renown. So let's just spend the money and put that in. This is close to being the best possible setup that you could have for this deck. The only way it would be better would be if we had had Tywin in his dupe instead of Jaime. But other than that, it's ideal. He shouldn't do this military unless he has a way to win it. But he's not Stark. He doesn't have For the North. Yeah, he just gave Tywin Renown for no reason. I wonder if he's going to Valar. If he has two Risens, it might be worth it to Valar. Otherwise, I don't think that's the right play. I'm already in territory where I might as well just play Exchange. Oh, that's interesting. City of Spiders, I guess, to get another Econ. Oh, does he have to give me milk? And Alchemist Guild Hall, that's so good. Oh, Casterly Rock. <laughs> he gave up. <laughs> no! <laughs> All right. Oh, geez. When I saw the Greyjoy aloof, I was like, oh, no, it's Greyjoy aloof. We're screwed. This this deck's too powerful. But, I, th I mean, that shows, you know, if you get lucky enough draws and they just don't have the same amount of luck in their setup and everything. I guess I should play another game. I would get pretty demoralized too in that position if I knew that I had just given him a milk of the poppy that was going to go straight onto that Asha. It's just, that, that hurts. The City of Spiders play where you do at the gates in the City of Spiders to get like another econ location i don't think that's good in this deck the point of this agenda is to give you economy so why are you dedicating two whole plots to nothing but getting limited locations like just at the gates is fine uh, do that with a different agenda that's not giving you money if you feel that strongly about it plus city of spiders is what like a four gold plot anyways i mean at that point just do building orders if you want to get another limited that badly, because you'll probably have one in the top 10 for building orders, but you can also use it to look for milk or other stuff when you need them. Oh, this is going to be sad if I'm like sitting here and I can't get another person to join the game. I'm trying to record, and, and that was the game that I recorded. If this takes a long, I mean, there's 13 games, so there's a lot of people online. This takes a long time. We might leave it there because, again, it's just not a very exciting deck. Oh, man, I guess while we're waiting, I can look at other cards that maybe didn't make the cut and could be in the deck. If you want to optimize more for the first snow of winter, there's definitely cards costing more than three that you can put in. That's kind of why I put three hounds to like make it to where I can probably have ambush cards for first snow. But if you don't, you know, if you don't feel so great about that. Bastard of Driftmark, is he good? 
Probably not. Osmond is interesting. You can like one shot Jamie and Gregor with Osmond, but I don't. Ultimately, I think there's just not enough knights to justify him. I thought about Kyburn, but he's just so bad. The fact that he has to kneel for that ability is just so terrible. Again, painted dogs, uh, fine if you want to play him with Line Star, probably. Amory Lorch, he could be a good one of. Because, I mean, the renown is conditional, but random renown with those stats is fine. This guy has Intimidate. Why does he have Intimidate? Oh, I remember this card. This card is too weird. But yeah, you can see it's kind of barren in this cost range. There's not a lot that stands out. Littlefinger is okay, although I prefer him in Iron Bank decks. Janos Slint is funny. Janos is a card that barely missed the cut. Like, if I had to have a six, 61 cards in this deck, the 61st card might be Janos Slint. Because, again, he's just so funny with the challenge phase gold. Even if you only pay one gold on his ability, a 5-4 with Intimidate is pretty decent. And then you have situations where he can get really out of control and really silly. Like, pay one to get plus two strength to a challenge is really efficient. If you compare to the actual stats on characters, you know, most characters, in my opinion, have solid stats when their strength is equal to their cost. Uh, something having, like, two more strength per gold of its cost would be insane. Like, a card that's five gold and ten strength, that's not something that exists. But if you have five spare gold to toss around, like on the fifth turn of the game, that's what Jano Slint gives you, is you can give somebody, well, you give Janos, but you get plus ten strength to a challenge. That can be nutty. And with Intimidate, it can mess people up. Oh, Baratheon Assault. This is weird. This is kind of a lame deck, but not totally lame. This is a time where it's really unfortunate that I chose not to run Pyromancer's Cash. Pyromancer's Cash is a card you want in this situation. Oh, that's a good setup. Do I want Hound or Pycelle? I mean... He might not even have any characters on his board. Oh, Hound would have been better against that, but how was I supposed to know? I think you always want Baratheon to go first, unless they have Intimidate Robert. Does Assault from the Shadows play the seven cost Intimidate Robert? I doubt it. Oh, this is a really juicy Jack and Hagar, because he's marshalling first, so he won't see it until after he spends his gold. So if Jacking comes out and kills that bastard of God's Grace, not God's Grace, what's this guy's name? Night Song? That'll be really nasty. Starting with the Red Keep is super good. Red Keep is probably going to be huge. Uh, is he going to pick Cersei or Jacking? <laughs> he sees the, the pinch of powder. We'll see if... Oh uh, yeah, Cersei. You can't blame him for that. He did. He should have seen the pinch of powder and the jacket, though. Oh, that's so rude. Come on, man. Kneeling my economy. Come on, man. That's what I get for putting him first player. And I, oh, I can play jacket. I have exactly enough. He has zero gold. I have to do it. So silly. The agenda giving me the minus two discount, even though he knelt my economy. Oh, no, not Jack and Hagar. I don't think he can have anything that saves him from this. Uh, the Iron Bank will have its due. Uh, that's the only thing, like, a way for him to get gold to do stuff. But what, you mean, he would have to, like, Iron Bank his Red Priest. Yeah, he's not going to do that. See, he did get my Cersei out of the game with this, but first of all, the first Snow of Winter's in my deck, but also, you should have done military, why do you do power? Uh, 
It should have done military. That's a wasted challenge. I was going to say, also I have Pinch of Powder. A situation where Pinch of, Pinch of Powder can show its worth. Man, this is exactly what I was talking about with this card being in this deck. And this is a card you could probably put one of in every aloof deck. You could probably build around him to an extent if you wanted to put three copies and then put in tech to help him win challenges by himself, like cards that give him stealth and Greyjoy and stuff like that. And yeah, Pike gives characters stealth. And plus in Greyjoy, you can like Raiding Longship and... Uh, Grey Ghost and have ways to, to get him to win challenges by himself and just, just totally screw people over like that. We're not playing a noble cause. Confiscation doesn't do anything. Might be first snow. I think we can save that for later because it's not super great to first snow here. Oh, perfect. I turned off that plot. I'll go first. The only reason I'm going first is because I have a pinch of powder. Also, I know he has that stupid kneel event now. So if I let him go first, he can use that to kneel my economy again. Uh, don't actually have any big characters. Oh, he got my other big character. He got Jamie. That sucks. I can't marshal anything that'll stay for first snow. That's so sad. Let's do pinch. Probably casterly rock. Sure. I can do Shay, maybe. Yeah, I think Shay is fine. So now I have Widow's Whale and Pinch. Oh, and I can spend gold on Shay, obviously. Oh, this is so dirty. This is I feel bad doing this. I guess we should do one intrigue with this guy first, just in case he has something in his hand that matters. Again, I'm not sure what that could even be. Plus it increases the odds that I discard Stannis after I pinch. This is so dirty. So if he's smart, he, he defends this. Yeah, he knows, but... Oh, I forgot to bring it out! I forgot to bring it out in the action window. I'm so bad at this game. It's fine. That would have been just so dirty. It's like... Ugh. It just feels slimy. Damn it. What am I doing? No, he remembered to use his. <laughs> That's hilarious.
See, he, he didn't want to pinch Jacken though. <laughs> Jacken is anti-pinch technology. All right, I think I first know now. I still don't have any noble cause targets. Confiscation discards my attachment. Let's just do this. Oh, building orders. Okay. Traitor to the crown, yes. That's that's definitely going to be in the Brathian Assault deck, and you have to be aware of Traitor to the Crown. Because what they do is put it in shadows and bring it out in the middle of the challenge, and they give your character zero strength that you declared for power. So I finally drew a big character. We're gonna play Tywin. Not even gonna do any math. I have so many ways to spend gold at this point. Oh, I might have wasted money, actually. Oh, no, that wasn't Noble Cause, so it was minus 2, minus 2. Yeah, it was exactly minus 7. This is really good against this deck. Save 1 per pinch. Well, I guess I should Bodyguard. Yeah, and then 1 for uh, Red Keep to stop his pinch. He can have a 3 strength intrigue character in shadows with that 3 gold, so we do the intrigue with Tywin. I remembered this time, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, we just military with Jacken. He could have a military icon in shadows. But I'd rather just do this. If I didn't have a bodyguard on Tywin, this would be a lot harder choice. Then I'm not sure if I would do this challenge. But I'm fine using Tywin's bodyguard. If he wants to take the bodyguard and then Valar, I don't care about that because of my hand. It's, I'm going to have to discard five cards this turn. And I have Cersei in hand. It's fine. Oh, that's sad. You didn't have anything? Three gold left. Four cards in shadows. None of those were characters? Oh, jeez. That's not enough? I guess I discard the casterly dupe. Oh... The reason not to do this is if he doesn't Doharis this turn, then I do this and play Cersei and he does Doharis. That's really bad. But all these other plots don't do anything except hurt me, so. All right. Just going to say Intrigue. That makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, the stupid pinch, like I was talking about with this card, now I think my board lead is so huge that... I'll be able to pinch him on power challenges pretty easily. See, so he's putting himself first because you can't go second against pinch with this board. But again, I think he's just kind of screwed. I mean, this is annoying. It's going to kneel all my econ again, and I think kneel the guild hall. It's three costs worth of locations, right? Yeah, he can just kneel everything except the red keep. Yep. That's kind of a crazy card. Maybe I should use that more often. But it's still, it's not going to be enough. Not for this turn, at least.
I think, yeah, so he can take out Cersei again, which is really sad. But yeah, I, I still get nine gold, and this is my hand. I'm going to be fine. This is the Hound's job to just block this and go back to hand. Ooh, Ray Keep Gowler. Oh, jeez. Do I want to block this? Sure. Pinching the Red Priest, there's no guarantee that he won't just go first and marshal it again next turn. So, blocking the Gowler is better. Does that have a limit? I don't think so. Yeah, he can just do it again. Oh, he doesn't have any more power to move, so he couldn't do it again. It would still be worth it to make him do it again discarding more power off his faction to put it on these characters so it'll die to a reset. But he doesn't even have the power. I can't do Intrigue. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Because I he has Traitor and Shadows guaranteed. The only question is, does he have two of them? I really hope he brings one of them out so I can confiscate it. Oh, that's rude. Why did I do... He didn't have any power on his faction card. That was actually bad. I should have just done Intrigue and then Power and tried to bait the traitor onto Tywin. Oh, I couldn't do Intrigue. That's why he blocked it with Parlay. I knew there was some type of reasoning to my plays there. Should I Valar Morghulis? Maybe? Oh, uh, sure. Why not? Probably not the right time to play that. <laughs> Trade routes. At least I can finally play Cersei. Black Sails is really annoying, but I should be able to Treachery at this turn. Yeah, I know. Kneel all the locations. Come on. This also doesn't work on Cersei, which is kind of funny. I mean, it kind of works on her, but she can still do Intrigue. Oh, this isn't just character. I thought this was only characters. Yeah, this can cancel it, too. Man, that's unfortunate. Oh, I have so little money, though, because he knelt my economy. He definitely has Valar Morghulis, so I need to bodyguard. Which sucks, because I cannot cancel the Black Cells. Yeah, 
Yeah, I possibly should have just saved that one gold to cancel that, because now he's going to military, and I'll have to use the bodyguard anyways. All right, I take it back. He's not going to military. Ooh, I should have blocked that. Forgot he has pinch of powder. That's my fault. Oh, and supported the people. That's gross. Really stupid not to defend that. This is what I'm talking about. You know, you just don't think about it. You just press it, and then by the time you try to defend, it's too late. I think Cersei's too expensive. Because he's going to kneel my locations again. Don't need another pinch. Milk has not done anything yet. Yes. Make him use the Valar when I have a bodyguard. So much of this game being dragged out is due to that stupid event giving me minus four gold every turn. If I have four more gold the past, like, two or three turns, I think I could probably win by now. Notice I haven't used my cancels on, like, Red Keep or uh, Treachery. I haven't used it once because I don't have money. Oh, he didn't do the event. Oh, it's because he would lose it. There's not a kingdom plot. Oh, man. Maybe that'll give me the breathing room I need. Both Valars have been played, so I don't care about the bodyguards anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, let's just play Tyrion. See, now I have gold to pay for cancels. You have privileged position? Come on. Yeah, he played the privileged position. So you have another one? Nope. This time I'm going to defend it. Actually, wait. He has zero gold. I don't know, just in case. Might as well at this point. But yeah, I think I was safe to not defend this time because he doesn't have gold. I guess that's why he was waiting on the privileged position. He was like, oh, should I save the gold? I don't care about him standing up. If he had claim, I would cancel it, but it's zero claim.
Putting a power to blank Jamie, I guess, sort of matters. The only thing it really does is, yeah, I'm going to win dominance anyways, so blanking Jamie didn't actually do anything. Like, he loses his renown, but you gave him a power, so either way, he got a power on him. And you made him kneel, but I'm still going to win dominance. See, I waited forever. I waited so long. Finally, I get to play Confiscation on that Traitor to the Crown. Another trade rouse makes sense. I guess 12 power, I should probably go first. Oh, yeah. We can play the dumb event with this trade routes gold, so going first actually does not protect me from that. Ah, uh, he forgot to do it, or did he? He forgot, that's sad. Now I have gold, I can cancel it. Uh, what am I waiting on? I'm willing to wait. I just, I don't know what am I waiting on. Should I play? I mean, this is better, right? All right, that's it. Let's see what I can do. I should be able to win, because I mean, I've got 12 power. I've just got such a giant board, and his is empty. But we'll see. Oh man, that would have been such an annoying card if he had that from like the start of the game. It's really lucky he didn't draw that. Although I do have milk, so maybe not. This card is a pain in the ass though. Oh uh, yeah. He realized there's no way. Let's concede. Oh no, he won. Damn, I'm really bad at this game. I guess Alchemist Guildhall counts cancer, uh, cancers, counters him. Alchemist Guildhall counters this card, too. It's so rare to have anything that can stop this card, because blanking him doesn't work. Yeah, I hate Red Keep. I only actually used it once. I mean, I guess even using it once can be game-deciding, but... Yeah, I can see why they gave this pay one gold, because that is super strong. But yeah, a lot of factions have almost nothing they can do about this card. Like, Nightmares doesn't work on him. Other stuff that blanks him doesn't work. It's like milk, and that's it for some factions. There's nothing else you can do besides, you know, Val Armor Ghoulis if he doesn't have a dupe. Uh, and he can totally screw you. Oh, man. I had a game. I have I had a, I have another deck that's, that I'm testing right now. It's like a weenie deck, and... I had like six characters and they're all just staying knelt because of this and I couldn't do anything about it. It was so sad. Anyways, that's uh, today's video.